Um, hello, welcome to the second day here. And we have a wonderful speaker and he is going to present. And um, his name is Stephen W. Um, how do you say it? Houghton the second. And his topic is a corporate and political structure for the colonization of Mars. So we have to welcome Steve and everybody. Give him a hand. Thank you for those kind words of introduction. So my name is Stephen Houghton. My talk today is towards a um, corporate and political structure for the colonization of Mars. And my basic thesis is that there are four, um, four um, stages of colonization with corresponding political or um, corporate structures to them. And that, um, of course, now it's gonna, it's gonna die on me. There we go. And the, the, the stages are first, organization, second, fundraising, exploration, and site selection, third, um, initial colonization and infrastructure development, and fourth, a full-fledged colony, and that their corresponding um, structures are a voluntary society, a, um, a settlement corporation, and a, the same settlement corporation with a municipal government, and fourthly, a full-fledged republic. So in stage one, um, the, there are basically four tasks that I foresee being um, of serious importance here. And they are first organizing the people who want to go to Mars. And that means setting down the terms of, of, of you know, being committed to going to Mars. Are you going to um, ask for a down payment on the ticket? Are we going to have different um, ticket commitments for people who have different resources. I think there will be a lot of people who will have to work their way to Mars as opposed to pay, being able to pay the full fare, and, and I think we need to accommodate that. And also we're going to have to set out the terms of settlement for every person who goes to Mars. You know, are, are they going to get half a square mile of land? That would certainly be in accordance with um, the historical um, precedent here in the United States. Then. Uh, secondly, they're going to need to write a corporate charter for a settlement corporation that will have to be pretty strictly written because otherwise we might very well have the corporate officers go off on a frolic of their own instead of um, doing what we, the, the members of the society, want them to do. Third, we're going to need to write a constitution for the republic when we get on Mars because I think we're all going to want to um, be governed by an agreement that we've, we've made in advance. And fourthly, we're going to need a, um, a statement of principles, sort of a cross between the Declaration of Independence and the Mayflower Compact. And also maybe the, the initial um, statement of the Mars Society. So in stage one, the structure will be a voluntary society governed by the, um, an annual meeting of all of the members of the society. Um, and it will debate questions that are brought forward by, a, um, by committees, four committees um, for the four principal questions, also ad hoc committees that will deal with um, various issues as they arise, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of them. Uh, the committees will be open to all interested members of the society. Also, we'll need an oversight committee to, to look after the uh, board of directors that will be elected by the annual meeting of the society. So that brings us to stage two, fundraising, um, exploration, and site selection. Um, fundraising, because as I mentioned before, um, there are going to be a lot of people who are not going to be able to pay the, the full fare to Mars. We're, they're going to uh, need to, to work their way to Mars. We're going to need to raise funds for, to pay for their tickets, even though their labor is going to be a huge benefit to um, a potential settlement. And also, there's going to be a, a need for other capital fundraising. And I foresee four sources of, of uh, financing for that. Firstly, high net worth individuals, I think Elon Musk, people who are really interested in going to Mars, and also people who maybe aren't at all interested, but think that there may be some financial advantage to it. Secondly, um, corporations, presumably vendors to the settlement corporation. Um, thirdly, governments. Um, you know. Under the terms of the Outer Space Treaty, the signatories are absolutely ban ban banned pardon, from, um, from claiming sovereignty over any um, part of Mars. 
but they might like to have some bases there and some land um, and a sovereign settlement over part of Mars could uh, sell land to them um, for that purpose. And fourthly, nonprofits, I think universities will want to have um, research institutes and campuses on Mars, and so they might be willing to, to put forward some funding. Exploration, um, the second task, that will include um, obviously robotic and human exploration. I think um, I'm considering the Tharsis region for the purposes of this talk because um, its volcanic history should, should uh, produce mineral ore, um, geothermal energy, and um, also um, should, there should be some maybe glacial water in the lower latitude, pardon, the higher latitudes of that area. So when um, the exploration stage is accomplished, then um, there will be a need for, um, the, a site will be selected that um, is close to geothermal water and has um, mineral ores. And I also assume we'll be near, near one of the um, large volcanoes there because um, I would think the, the peak would be a good place for the um, ejection port of a mass driver system to throw cargo back to Mars. The structure for this will be a corporation. Corporations exist basically to do projects that are too capital intensive and um, too long lasting for any particular individual to carry out. Um, so the corporate form is perfect for, for this part of the, the mission. I think we will want the shareholders and the ticket holders slash members of the voluntary society to be the same people. We want um, the corporation that settles Mars to be controlled by those of us who want to go live there. Um, there will be subsidiaries of the settlement corporation that will carry out various tasks such as exploration, um, the carriage of people to Mars, and various infrastructure projects um, and uh, the construction of the initial habitable structures on Mars. Um, as far as the fundraising part of that, in addition to the ticket sales slash um, stock sales for the settlement corporation, there will be the sale of bonds um, by the settlement corporation um, and they will be presumably backed by the voluntary society at first and later by the government once uh, we have a government established on Mars. Also, funds can be raised by selling the stock of the subsidiary corporations of the settlement company that are doing the, the various tasks. Obviously, um, the majority position would be held by the settlement society, but um, there's still an opportunity to sell a good bit of minority stakes. Also, I assume that the colony will, um, will claim land areas in excess of that which would be um, distributed to the colonists upon their arrival on Mars, and that land could be potentially sold as another means of raising funds for getting to Mars. Um, the third stage, um, this is where all of the, the tasks um, that I've mentioned will be carried out in stage two will be carried out by the subsidiaries. There will be the building of um, the initial habitation modules and agriculture. There'll be um, the construction of power generation and uh, distribution, water production and distribution, mining and minerals fabrication, pardon, materials fabrication, uh, road and rail construction, um, and mass driver uh, for launching things back to Earth. The structure, I think, will be at first in this stage, a company town with the, the, the corporation um, running things, probably with a, some sort of governor who's appointed jointly by the voluntary society and the settlement corporation. Um, and then later, um, you know, during this period, obviously those tasks will be carried out by the subsidiaries. Later, as, as there are a larger portion of people who are um, on Mars, then we're going to need a municipal government with mayor and a council and presumably a town meeting for, um, to, to uh, ratify the decisions made by those bodies and maybe to appoint a judge um, to, to mediate disputes. The fourth stage um, is when there are enough people on Mars to, um, to, to um, need a full government and then we'll, we'll execute the constitution, we'll elect the officers under it, 
and we'll wind down the settlement corporation, probably spin off all of the subsidiaries, which hopefully have been designed so that um, they can be easily split in half so that we do not have a dependency on any one point source that would um, lead to you know, the extraction of monopoly profits. Um, and then the government of the new republic would assume the debts of the settlement corporation whose only purpose after all had been to get us all to Mars and, um, and, um, and bring this constitution and government into effect. Um, and then obviously as I just mentioned, we were gonna wanna have con um, increased competition so hopefully we've set that all up appropriately. Um, the structure should be a constitutionally limited democratic republic uh, federal Republic, because I know there are lots of people with lots of varying ideas about politics at this meeting. And I have met somebody who believes it, does not believe in property and land, and I've certainly met some anarcho-capitalists here, um, and I'm sort of a mild um, Democratic, Republican, Libertarian type. Um, so different local governments under different um, different forms I think would be important to make everyone involved as happy as possible. I think the terms of settlement need to be laid out in the Constitution. Um, you know, how much land will each of the colonists receive when they get to Mars? We need an enforceable Bill of Rights. And um, lastly, a frame of government including a um, bicameral legislature, um, elected uh, executive, and an independent judiciary. So um, I'm Look forward to any questions you might have. I'm sure you have many, um, uh, but every country needs a flag, so there's an idea for one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, no, I, I, did, I did sort of write a uh, model um, statement of principles. If anyone wants one, I, I, could, I brought a bunch of copies with me. Um, but no, I don't have a website yet, no. Uh, yes, of course, I would, I, I, I mean, I've, it's, so far this is just me sitting down and writing out a talk. I would love for volunteers, we could get, get going, yes. I, I absolutely take your point, but I also think that we don't want to get there and then um, dis discover that we can't agree with one another and have a civil war because, or, or worse, a dystopian future because we didn't think of, of this sort of thing ahead of time. I mean, take the settlement company stage, you could easily end up with some sort of corporate dictatorship or, um, you know, there are a hundred ways things could go wrong. So I, well, Pardon? Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the Outer Space Treaty. In fact, my rejected talk was on why I think the Outer Space Treaty is, is not good law. <laughs> so, I, unfortunately, you're getting half of my, my thoughts on this. Sir. Sure. Sure, I, I, I'm not saying that the Outer Space Treaty is the work of Satan, I'm just saying that it's got yeah. issues, that's all. Yeah, well, I'm saying there's a, a loophole in there that gets you going. I don't think it's a loophole. I think they, they meant to let people yeah, put yeah. their halves on the surface and, and, and own the land under them. Sure. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Mm. Country. Well, sure, and 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 I I I have a half-written constitution. It only claims five percent of the surface of Mars, not not the whole thing. I mean, just you know, it claims an area that would be suitable for a settlement of several million people. All right. Well. Um, how, how, how fast was I? Well, I like the idea because I think, as you said, when you project ahead for what might be, at least there's a vision there. Now, it may not be the correct vision, but you can't. It, I always say it's a lot easier to edit a book than to write it. That's right. And also, so I, I sort of th thought that uh, I shouldn't go into too much detail because I, I thought this might take longer than, than it actually has. You know, I think there are a lot of um, interesting questions about representation in a republic. Um, do you know, there's the idea of, of choosing representatives by, um, by lottery, the idea of having a direct democracy, yes? Mm. Well, I mean, that's certainly not, you know, I think anyone who's being serious about the question of how long will that take, you know, couldn't, couldn't say that it will take more than 100 years, but couldn't say it will take, I mean, much less either. I mean, it's going to take a lot of work, you know, but I, I certainly agree with that. But on the other hand, you know, Elon Musk seems to think that he's going to have people on Mars in, what was his, his he, yeah, okay, so in, in, in six years. So, you know, the time to start thinking is now, not, not, not after there are several hundred people on the surface. Sure, but the, we're, we're still going to find some new mistakes to make, I'm sure. <laughs> sure, no, I mean, I, to take the example of the Constitution, I assume the Voluntary Society will continue updating that until the point when when the first people start to go, and then after all, they can't can't they're going to have a hard time getting back. So it gets a little unfair to change the rules on them after that, sir. Well, I'm assuming this is, I mean, the, I assume the voluntary society would be people from all over. I mean, um, as an English-speaking American, I have, some, I have my own biases about, about that, but um, I think there will be people from all over, if, if, if which is doubtful. I was elected dictator of this whole project. Um, even, even, even then, um, you know, there would be lots of diversity, and as I say, I wouldn't think this would be the only, you know, political settlement on Mars. I think that, you know, however long it takes, it, you know, eventually there's going to be many new nations on Mars and on the moon and um, in free space and all over. Yes? Well, let's test that. We're talking about a dead rock with minus 70 degrees, mm -hmm. below zero, with wind. Certainly. And the Colta is 35 million miles away. Mm -hmm. It takes six months to get there, and the launch window is once every uh, uh, 26 months. And we're thinking that we're going to have colonies and we're going to have nations there. Uh, I don't see that happening uh, anytime soon. Well, I'll put it to you this way. The, the, the nations of the Earth thought that, that it was worth making it illegal to do the same thing on 
Antarctica because, you know, otherwise, partly that's because they didn't want to fight over it. But I, I think that the, the, the evidence of history is that, you know, Svalbard is occupied by people, um, and the only reason that there are only governmental outposts on Antarctica, which is, you know, a not dissimilar environment except for the atmosphere, um, is because it's because the United States, Russia, and China would kick the butt of anyone who tried to settle there. Yes, of course. I'd be happy. I'd be. I'd be happy. I'd be happy to. I. I, I was hoping we might provoke. Yeah, of course. Yes. Absolutely. You, you mean, what is, the, what is the current state of the law on that? The current state of the law is that the commander of the ship would be, you know, judge, jury, and executioner. I mean, that's my understanding of the OSD. When you're at sea, you basically are. Sure, I mean, that's like why I mentioned at one point about a company town. You know, I mean, I think there's, there, it's going to start out, and I think a, on Earth we'll have a voluntary society, but then we'll have a settlement corporation, and that's going to probably operate at least at first on the surface in a quasi-military way. I, I, I mean, you know, there's of course the famous example of the strike on Skylab, but you know, and I, I don't think that's what we want want to have happen. And 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 um, you know, I th I think that at first things will be fairly disciplined, and then eventually we're going to. You know, create our own, you know, political societies. Uh, actually, the gentleman behind you first. Sure. Yes. In other words, they had to start working for some employer. Presumably the settlement and corporation in this case. That practice existed even in Brazil in the 1970s when I lived there. People sure. from Portugal and England and so on. To make a long story short, uh, you know, if somebody screwed up on one of those ships mm -hmm. going across the water, uh, you know, that's what the ships were. Well, sure. I mean, I that's, I mean, as this gentleman has just said, the environment in question is unforgiving, and you know until there's some sort of um, made serious settlement, it's going to be you know I mean not too pleasant. So that's why I, I emphasize coming to agreements about a settlement corporation's charter and and a constitution in advance, uh, because you know it could be very unpleasant if you had a lot of desperate people, um, you know making political decisions ad hoc as they go along. That doesn't sound um, particularly wise to me. Okay, we're at the end. Thank you very much. If anyone has any more questions, let's chat afterwards.